Good morning. Investors are looking at the semiconductor industry wrong, and they're paying high premiums for shares of companies that are in big trouble in global markets, in countries that they're not paying enough attention to. A year ago, almost nobody had heard of DeepSeek, which is a Chinese large language model. But now DeepSeek and other Chinese LLMs are strongly preferred to AI systems from US companies. Amazon, Microsoft, and Google have operations across the world, and they have no choice but to offer DeepSeek to their customers outside the US because of the high demand for it. The reason is simple. Chinese artificial intelligence systems have performance that is about as good, but are far less expensive. China has advantages in two of the most important building blocks for AI. China has lots of data, and they have lots of smart people. These are the top performing AI models from Chatbox Arena. The companies in red are from China, and Chinese firms hold four of the top 11 spots. DeepSeek scored a 1424, while OpenAI, ChatGPT, got a 1428. So that is a negligible difference in performance, but DeepSeek costs 17 times less than comparable platforms built by US companies. That makes it a no-brainer for almost everyone who is allowed to install and use DeepSeek. In Chile and Brazil, it's appealing because of scarcity of computing power and budget restraints. But HSBC and Standard Charter are some of the biggest banks in the world. Saudi Aramco has money gushing out of the ground, and they also opted for DeepSeek. A key difference is here. Chinese companies develop AI to help users build applications quickly and cheaply. Quen is an open source model from Alibaba, and developers have created over 100,000 derivative models. Remember here that Chinese AI apps are banned in the United States and Europe for governments, but developers in Japan are using them to generate sets of data for government ministries there. Outside the United States then, acceptance is wide and deep for Chinese AI. DeepSeek is the most downloaded app in 156 countries. The largest markets for them are China, India, and Indonesia. Just those three countries add to over 3 billion people. And that's a big part of the problem for U.S. companies and investors. Country by country, user by user, the whole world is being put to a decision. American or Chinese AI systems. The most important determination of who wins that race is not profits or who can call it their governor and get it banned at a U.S. state level. It's a contest to win the markets of the world because that will establish the protocols and technologies going forward. So the news is already bad on that. Small businesses and content creators and developers are choosing Chinese AI because it offers them more flexibility for a lot less money. Asian banks, Saudi oil companies, and contractors for the government of Japan are choosing Chinese AI because it works better for them, even though money is no object. Here's where we have some bad news for NVIDIA. This company is now a $4 trillion company by market cap. But Huawei's chips perform better in AI applications than NVIDIA's. This global race that involves DeepSeek and Quen versus ChatGPT and Anthropic, it's also a chips race. And if Chinese AI sets the standard across the world, it's companies like Huawei that will build the chips for it all. Now, NVIDIA still builds chips that are faster and better on a unit basis, head to head. But Huawei's chips operate together as systems that are stronger than NVIDIA's systems. We won't spend a lot of time on this report because after the first three paragraphs, I didn't understand a single word of the thing. But this analysis takes apart the system architectures of NVL72 from NVIDIA and the Cloud Matrix 384 from Huawei. 
This also isn't the most reader-friendly table we've ever seen. The scores for the individual chips come first. GB200 is from NVIDIA. The Ascent 910C is from Huawei. On every metric there, NVIDIA's chip is better. Huawei versus NVIDIA, Huawei scores are 30%, 70%, a pair of 40% on these metrics. At the system level, though, it's a different story. Suddenly, Huawei is many times better across the board. They explain it this way. Chinese advantages are at the system level in networking, optics, and software. Huawei is still a generation behind in chips, but when system architects scale them up and put them together, it's Huawei that's a generation ahead. Huawei's Ascend chip has one-third the performance of the NVIDIA, so they just use more of them. That would be a serious obstacle in Western countries where electricity is a lot more scarce and expensive, but in China it's an afterthought. So the system capabilities for Huawei and China are superior to what NVIDIA builds, and that's right now. Here is the problem for investors. They have made an all-in bet that NVIDIA would build chips and systems that outperform all of their global peers and that it would be American AI that would dominate the world and set the standard. That entire thesis is highly in doubt now. These are the numbers though. NVIDIA shares keep hitting record highs and the margins for NVIDIA chips command the highest premiums in the industry. The gross margins on NVIDIA sales are over 70% and over half their revenues go to the bottom line as profits. Investors are pricing NVIDIA shares as if the company were an extreme outlier for perfection with deep competitive advantages that support high profit margins and high stock price premiums that are durable over the long term. But what if they aren't? This is from McKinsey and they note that just a small handful of companies are benefiting from the AI boom at all. And this is before DeepSeek and Quen and Huawei decided to take over everywhere outside the United States and Europe. Just 5% of the companies in the space generated all of the industry profits last year. NVIDIA is mentioned, this group of companies that generated $159 billion in economic value. That's best expressed as gross margins, the ability of a company to capture a high premium over their costs. 90% of tech companies combined for only $5 billion in profits, with the rest losing big money. This is a power curve, which demolishes the idea that investors can buy a mutual fund or an ETF and diversify risk away or benefit from gains in some obscure companies industry-wide. There aren't any. All of the money is being made by a tiny group of companies. And even in that group, NVIDIA is the elephant in the room. It appears that the industry is in broad recovery since 2022. But if we back out NVIDIA, the industry overall is in broad decline. That's that light blue line at 85% or so of the level from 2022 May. The reason for that decline is China. The United States had strict export bans on semiconductor sales to China, the objective of which was to destroy the chip making industry here. That went off the rails from the very beginning. Now China represents a record high global market share for semiconductors and equipment. And McKinsey forecasts a 9% compound growth rate for Chinese domestic companies going forward. And to repeat, that growth estimate was before Chinese AI models show up, which run on Chinese chips. Most companies outside China will struggle to grow because of companies like NVIDIA, which are focused on AI, and because of China, whose companies operate at industrial scale. But now even NVIDIA has an existential problem because China's at-scale companies just figured out how to build a better system. This is Huawei, their campus in 
Dong Guan, Guangdong. Be good. Children, which are church, are empowered to go 